Tesla has dropped by $700 billion in just three months. The stock price, it's dropped by about 50%. And now is this a great buying opportunity? I'm looking at Tesla stock today from a long-term value investing standpoint. It's usually best to keep politics out of your portfolio. So if you care about making great investments, this research here today should be useful. So let's jump in. Even after this roughly 50% drop, Tesla stock, it still looks expensive today. The price to sales ratio comes in at 7.5. And here's how that compares to other big tech companies. Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, etc. And keep in mind, these companies also have pretty high valuations after a very long-term bull market. With the lowest sales growth and operating margin, Tesla investors today, they're still making a big bet on future growth. And will Tesla pick up with sales in 2025? Not likely. Uh, you can check out a recent article I put together on Substack. I'll link to it in the description. It's about a 2025 recession, and I shared two charts to kind of help cut through all the noise, uh, the yield curve inversion and interest rates, uh, some commentary around that. Overall consumer spending, it is slowing down on many fronts. There's also a higher chance of cutting back EV tax incentives. And on top of that, there's more political and global pressure on Tesla. Chinese EV companies like BYD, they've advanced rapidly and they're selling more affordable electric cars. There were headlines here just in the last week. BYD is now producing some of the fastest charging stations for EVs. In the short term, it takes mental gymnastics to justify Tesla's valuation. But how about further out? This is where the Tesla Super Bowls, they really put a lot of faith in this. Here are the top potential areas for growth. And up first, Tesla full self-driving and robo-taxis. I own a Model Y and I've tested a Tesla FSD many times. Don't get me wrong, it's impressive technology. It's improving at a solid rate. But realistically, it's still far from human out of the loop driving with regulatory approval. I've been covering this topic, self-driving cars and automation for about 10 years, and I'm gonna link to some more useful research in the description. Since 2016, Elon Musk has been making bold claims on autonomous driving, but he really just keeps on pushing back the timeline. Competition with self-driving cars is also fierce. Waymo and many other well-funded companies, they're racing towards full self-driving. It is gonna unlock a lot of benefits, but I doubt that there's gonna be much of a first mover advantage. Similar to the AI race that we're seeing play out here in the last few years, other companies are easily able to replicate a lot of the software advancements. Companies like Uber and Lyft, they might be more likely to benefit. They really have a ride hailing network effect already at play. They could benefit from the cost per trip dropping and the overall number of trips increasing, Jevons paradox. I haven't looked at those uh, companies, uh, their valuations for a while, but it might be high tide that I, I check them out again here soon. With fierce competition with self-driving, the cost of the rides, it's gonna come down, but the same is true with those margins. I've looked into Tesla DCF valuations over the years, discounting cash flows, uh, and many analysts, they've been way too optimistic about Tesla FSD. I even put together a YouTube video back in 2021. I called out ARK's ridiculous price, price target for Tesla stock. Since then, Tesla stock is about break even. The company's valuation is about half of ARK's bear case prediction for 2025. Going forward, I am still really optimistic about our autonomous future. I'll link to compelling research that shows 17 benefits of a fully self-driving future. However, I am more pragmatic than most on the timeline along with the future cash flows from it. On to the next big area that there is a lot of potential for Tesla, it's Tesla robots. There's a 99% chance that Tesla is gonna end up producing millions of humanoid robots but the number of breakthroughs required is still a long list. That's to improve the functionality and really make them affordable at scale. But once again, there's lots of competition on this front. With lower barriers to entry compared to autonomous driving, there are more companies building robots. That's great, but it is gonna put more 
uh, pressure on sales and margins down the road. Some competitors include Atlas from Boston Dynamics, uh, Figure, Agility Robotics, uh, Unitree, and many others. And those are just humanoid kind of focused comp Well, they do have other lines as well, uh, but robots is a very, very wide segment with a lot already being used in factories today. For humanoid robots, big cash flows are really far out from today. And this adds a lot of risk to predicting them as well as a higher discount to bring those uh, future cash flows to a present value. By 2030, we should have a little more clarity on the timeline for wide adoption of humanoid robots. Those are the two big segments that a lot of investors or optimistic investors point to. But what are Tesla's real top revenue drivers in 2025 and leading into 2030? Lots of speed bumps last year and here in 2025, they're slowing Tesla's auto business. Tesla, it's likely gonna lower car prices or at least come out with a cheaper model to stay competitive. But once again, this puts pressure on margins and already Tesla is on the lower end of the pack, at least compared to big tech. Nonetheless, this segment, it is gonna grow in the years ahead. To complement the auto business, Tesla is also growing its insurance business. It currently offers insurance in 12 states. The company, it hasn't broken out this revenue segment uh, from its larger business, but estimates put it maybe close to 1 billion in premiums for 2025. So not bad and it should grow in the years ahead. For most people, insurance is a boring business, but it's a huge for investors. Insurance is the foundation of Warren Buffett's empire, but I won't bore you with those details. Tesla, it has better driver data than probably any other car insurance company. Not as much of a history, but just overall better behavior data with tracking in the car. On top of that, its cars have consistently got top safety ratings from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA. If I could get Tesla uh, insurance directly through Tesla, um, I'm in South Dakota, uh, which it's not offered, I would if it was an option. I'm guessing the premiums would be lower compared to other providers because I drive like a grandma. For the biggest driver of new revenue for Tesla in 2025 and the years ahead, it's the solar and energy business. Here's uh, a look at the last three years of Tesla's revenue segments. While the auto business was down just slightly, the energy segment grew 67%, and it's not coming from an insignificant base. Having climbed above $10 billion, it makes up over 10% of Tesla's total revenue. 67%, that's huge growth for a year. And if Tesla could compound it at that rate annually, it'd reach $130 billion in revenue by 2030. It's doable, but that is a hard growth rate to sustain from that base. Either way, a great trend for investors, but overall still not enough to justify the big valuation today, even after the 50% drop in the share price. Tesla stock, it just commands a premium price. There's a lot to like about Tesla. There's great innovation on many fronts. And risk today with the company owning it, it is a lot lower as the company has scaled production. A lot less risk than those early days. The company also has a solid balance sheet, much better than traditional auto companies. More similar to big tech, and that's why I showed those as comparison companies. However, price matters. I'm not trying to figure out what Tesla stock is going to do in the next year. That's largely a fool's game. I'm looking more 5, 10, 15, 20 years out. I'm a long-term investor, and at the current valuation, I'm going to sit on the sidelines. There's better opportunities. Tesla stock, it could easily return to new highs, or it could hit new lows. If the latter hitting new lows, I'd be more tempted to invest and I'll continue to share updates here on my YouTube channel. Feel free to check out my Substack. I'll leave a link to that. I'm doing a weekly article uh, on mostly finance and econ topics. And uh, if you found this thought provoking, I'd really appreciate it if you just tap the like button uh, as well as subscribe. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments.